What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy in the overall market. And talk about Apple's big launch event for today, not to mention some new developments on the charts. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moon link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. Deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total. Not to mention 8.1% APY. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with the markets. So I just want to mention that Tesla's trying to rebound right over here. But we're going to be looking at this resistance to watch for around this 217 area. If that breaks, we could be looking for a rally back up to 220. Now, even if we do see this temporary rally, I want to mention that Apple has a tendency of dictating the market. It's used as an excuse to move uh, the overall market uh, because it helps control the outflow and inflow of money. And the market is kind of moving in unison. We're trying to gap up together. But if we get the Apple event and we get a sell-off, th there is a possibility that this could cause Tesla to sell off later on as well. So I want everyone to be prepared for that just in case, not to become too comfortable at these levels, especially considering the fact that we have this big gap to fill down over here. So I'll talk more about this in just a couple of minutes. I first want to mention that today is Monday, September 9th, 2024. We have wholesale inventories at 10 o'clock a.m., which is very minor data, not to mention the New York Fed Treasury purchases. Very minor data is coming out. At 11 o'clock a.m., we have consumer inflationary expectations, not to mention bill auctions at 11.30 a.m., so very, very minor data for today. However, something very important for the broader markets is this right over here. Uh, Apple is going to be holding its annual uh, fall iPhone-centric events on Monday, September 9th. That's today. It's going to be at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, which is about 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, by the way. So make sure you're prepared for that. Get ready for some volatility at that time. We're going to be talking about their new iPhone 16 models, refreshes to all the Apple Watches, new AirPod 4s. And the list goes on. Very, very cool products and very, very awesome stuff, in my opinion. But one thing that's worth mentioning is that these tend to act as buy the rumors, sell the news events for Apple. So even if we, you know, get some great announcements and Apple does kind of push approaching this event, right? So it is possible Apple holds them for the time being. But once they start announcing their products, what oftentimes happens historically is we get a sell off. So I want you guys to be prepared for that just to be safe. Uh, that is what tends to happen. So we will see if that ends up being the case. So I want to give you guys a warning about that. For other pieces of news, I'm seeing some news about how uh, Boeing is working on the labor agreement right over here. Uh, and then I saw other things coming out that are more minor, but that's pretty much it for the main thing right now. The main thing affecting the market is going to be Apple, which will affect Tesla and the broader markets. If we do get a massive sell-off or not, we'll have to wait and see. Um, on top of this, I just want to say that uh, for used models that could be very, very sustainable for Tesla, we're seeing some recognition for many of these, such as the Model S from 2016 to 2018. We're seeing recognition for that. Uh, they still have a lot of capabilities, such as enhanced autopilot hardware and very, very uh, nice warranties, at least for their batteries that could still last. And they have very, very cool uh, capabilities, even despite the longevity of it. Model 3 from 2018 to 2020 is getting a lot of attention as well for its EPA high rated range. And then they have the dual motor all wheel drive. And then there's others out there, such as the Model X, which is very impressive, Model Y as well. So cool stuff, in my opinion. I've seen a lot of talk about this right now from the media. However, I didn't see too much news for Tesla, at least right now. If more news does come out later, I'll talk about it. Instead, I just want to focus on what's happening with the charts. That's going to be our next priority. So for Tesla, we're trying to rebound right up here. So what's interesting was I called out this big yellow trend line, right? We were riding this yellow line. You guys can see we've been riding above that for quite some time. Bouncing off this, bouncing off this, bouncing off this. And yes, Tesla's trying to rebound, but you have to remember that when you really zoom out, Tesla has been stuck within a range, at least for the much shorter term. I'm just talking about like shorter to medium term projections. I'm not talking about the much larger picture, which is the fact that Tesla's been on a massive downtrend for many years. I'm not really talking about that. I'm just talking about this range right over here that we have where Tesla's getting bought back up in the lower 200s. And we do tend to sell off around the like 236, 235 area. So with that being said, I think Tesla's going to likely remain range bound for some time which suggests that even if we do continue this rally, we might not continue to rally forever. So we're going to be looking at 217's resistance. If we break this, we're looking for 220, not to mention 222. 
If we get above 222, we're looking for 225. If we end up losing 215 on Tesla, I'm going to be looking at 212 very close to this 200 EMA, followed by this yellow trend line as our support. And if that breaks, we will turn more bearish and we'd be looking for like 208. So in my opinion, as of right now, we're trying to hold up. We may even try to push a little higher for like the 217 area, maybe a little bit higher than that as of right now. But then we will see if later on down the line, if we get some kind of rejection and resistance, if we do come back to fill this gap, especially because Apple has its event at 10 a.m. Pacific time or 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And generally, that does lead to solves in the market. So be prepared for that just to be safe. Now, let's actually, let's actually focus on Apple first before I talk about Spy and the others. So Apple's kind of consolidating. One thing that's worth mentioning about Apple is we've been holding up a lot better than the market, showing some signs of strength. So with the events coming out, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if Apple tries to push a little bit, kind of consolidates in this range. We're range bound right now between 219 now. 219 is the support because our 200 EMA trended upwards. So that's the support. And our resistance is going to be around 222.4 and 223.6, not to mention 225. So we're just range bound on Apple. We're going to likely continue to go back and forth between these levels. But then when the event starts, what usually happens is we might, may get a sell-off. At least typically that's what happens. So we'll see, guys. Uh, if Apple does get a sell-off, that could drag lots of stocks down. It's no surprise we have a lot of gaps below. As far as SPY goes, we're currently shuffling around 544. If we break that, we're looking for 545, not to mention 547 is our resistance levels. And if 547 breaks, we're looking for 550. If we reject and lose 544, and we don't hold above 544, we're at risk of dipping all the way down to the 542 area. And if that fails us, I expect this gap to fill taking us all the way down to 540. And I don't think we'd stop there. I think we'd just continue to dip all the way down to at least 538 or so. So then 538 to 540 area is coming next if we lose 542. And if we break past 545, we're looking for 547. So you'll be watching these levels very carefully. It is possible we hold up for the time being. But I think there's going to be a risk of coming down to fill this gap later on. I still hold that view. Just give it some time. And Apple's events can be the catalyst to cause that. NVIDIA's range bound. We have a tendency of getting bought back up around 104. Uh, right now, we're only up 1%. So it's not really much green so far. But look at 104's resistance. If that breaks, we're looking for 108 and then 110. If that rejects, we're looking for 99. In my opinion... We're just completely range bound. So give this some time. I think we could rebound a little bit and just continue to consolidate. So we will see how it goes. That's all I'm seeing for the time being. For ES, we're attempting a rebound right now. Um, I think that it's possibly pushing a little bit higher to try to get closer to this imbalance. So 5475 could come. But once we get close to our 20 EMA, there's a chance it could reject back down. So you want to be very mindful of that. Uh, it looks like it might try to push a little higher if we get back above the structure. If we hold above 54.50, we'd be looking for 54.75 to 54.80. Next is our target, and we'll see if we reject or not. For the QQQ, it's not as strong as SPY. There's still relative weakness on this, especially because of how close we are to making these lows right over here. So, you know, NASDAQ is showing a little bit of weakness right here. I still think we may attempt to push higher. We're looking for 453 as resistance. If that breaks, we're looking for 455. And then four, five, eight. If you reject off four, five, three, we're going to be looking for, you know, this gap to fill, taking us all the way down to at least four, forty-eight, if not lower, because of Apple's events potentially. So, it is possible we consolidate for a bit, but I think we're going to eventually come down to fill this gap. So I don't think we're done yet. So keep that in the back of your guys' minds. For a few more, we also have the IWM Russell two thousand. This is on a big downtrend right now. We're looking at this 208 area as our support. If this does not hold, we're going to be looking for 206. If this does hold, we can look for a rebound to 210. But so far, I'm seeing a little bit of weakness. For Coinbase, we're continuing to fall right now. We have 147 as support, not to mention one, uh, the 145 area. And we have resistance around 155. Uh, 152, then 155, not to mention 161.5. We could kind of consolidate right now. I think we might make consolidate maybe to a little bit lower as coin is showing weakness. So we'll see how things go. For Amazon, we're attempting to gap up, but just know that we have an inverse cup and handle like structure. And Amazon might be just trying to start a counter trend rally, just a little one right here. And if we establish a lower high again, we will continue to dip back down to fill this gap. So for now, it's trying to push. It could get a little bit higher for the 174 area to test these EMAs. But we'll see if we get this rejection and come back down to fill that gap. So don't forget about that. Meta is also trying to rebound. We're looking for basically a test of 506. If that breaks, we're looking for 510. 
but then it could still reject the dip lower because as you guys can see we have a high right here came down made a lower high came down made a lower high so it's on a downtrend it may rebound a little bit to our key emas before it continues lower to fill that gap uh, microsoft still has two gaps and it's also on a bearish structure so we pumped rejected pumped rejected every time it pumps it kind of rejects i could see it retest like 407 but there's a risk of it coming back down to about 402 not to mention another gap well down below so the trend is still bearish on microsoft google's also bearish overall making lower highs i could see an attempt to get back up to 155 to continue to push they could, it could go a little higher uh, but the trend is still bearish we need to break past 160 to turn back to bullish as of right now, we could rally back up to the mid-150s, but then we could reject and start tipping back down to 150. All right, guys. So overall, the market is attempting to gap up. This is helping Tesla gap up too. May even push a little bit higher. Okay. We could even push a little higher, but I'm not saying the move is going to last because we have these gaps below. We have Apple's event. Generally, this does lead to a temporary rally followed by a big rejection. So make sure you watch resistance and we'll see how well Tesla does. I want to give you guys a heads up about that. And we'll see how things go. Thank you for listening, guys. Have a great day. Watch your levels very carefully and be prepared for Apple's big events later on for today. Uh, it's going to cause some high volatility. So get ready and peace out.